sabi niya. I would like that to replay. Go, go, go. Yes, close it. Yep, close it. Close it. All right, beautiful people. Where we at? We at seven fifteen on the dot. Happy Tuesday, everybody! Happy Tuesday! It is December the twenty first, twenty twenty one. Day three hundred and thirty three of year three of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets, and of the three year consecutive day count. Day one thousand and one one zero zero one. Today we're reading chapter 12 and 13 in the first Maccabees, and then we're going to hop on over to a walk of the spirit, the walk of power, and read chapter 4. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Do the Shema chapter, a call for wholehearted commitment. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that Yahuwah, your God, commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. And you and your children and grandchildren must fear Yahuwah, your God, as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey. Just as Yahuwah, the God of your ancestors, promised you, listen, O Israel, Yahuwah, our God, he is God alone. And you must love Yahuwah, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Then Yahuwah, your God, will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig, and you will eat from vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, 
Be careful not to forget Yahuwah who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear Yahuwah your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must only use his name. You must not worship any of the gods of the neighboring nations. For Yahuwah, your God, who lives among you, is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You must not test Yahuwah, your God, as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of Yahuwah, your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in Yahuwah's sight so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that Yahuwah swore to give to your ancestors. You will drive out all the enemies living in the land just as Yahuwah said you would. In the future, when your children ask you, what is the meaning of these laws, decrees, and regulations that Yahuwah our God has commanded us to obey? Then you must tell them, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but Yahuwah brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. Yahuwah did miraculous signs and wonders before our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us this land he had sworn to give to our ancestors. And Yahuwah, our God, commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear him so he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands Yahuwah our God has given to us. Shayla, auntie, shalom, grand uprising, great rising. All right, beautiful people. Oh, my mama, I was looking for my mama. Little auntie, I got this mat that y'all told my mama about, this grounding mat. Whew, came in the mail yesterday, went ahead and hooked that jank up. Slept on it last night. I definitely could tell the difference. Cause I had um I don't I don't know if it's our bed. We got a good bed. We was like maybe we need to upgrade it again. I don't know. I maybe we need to change like the firmness of the mattress or something, right? Um, uh, but anyway, I hooked the jank up. I got the grounding mat and the grounding pillow, right? And so she was explaining to me. I watched the video and everything. Um, and she said she felt like a little tingling at first, which I felt. And so when I felt it, I'm like, oh, let me get up. I don't want to be electrocuted, you know, acting silly and stuff. I said, let me go back and watch this video again before I lay down here <laughs> on this grounding mat. And I got, I didn't get the full queen size uh, for the whole bed. I just got like the half side. I was like, let me test this first while I lay my husband up here, right? We both be electrocuted in the bed, right? <laughs> I know it ain't going to let you cute you, but you know, I had to go through and double check. I'm reading comments of people and stuff. I'm actually going to call them today. So I watched that video. I'm like, oh, well, okay. I was like, yeah, I kind of know this because we'll go outside and we'll ground. You know, we had been grounding like for the last year, just go outside barefoot, you know, on good days, especially when it's warm and everything. And it, it really does make a difference in your overall health and your body, right? You know, so um, laid on the mat. And I was I was kind of scared to use the pillow. I really was. So I was just kind of sitting on it. Because when I laid on it, I started feeling a tingling. I was like, yep, that's that tingling she was talking about. She said it only lasts maybe like 10 minutes. I was like, okay, it's probably adjusting the ions and electrons and stuff. Got it flowing through my body, getting it where it needs to. But I had, because um, sometimes I had issue with my sciatic nerve, right, in my lower back. And it had kicked in. It, it, it didn't, like, really hurt. But I could... I could feel it. That was mean I, I was doing too much. I didn't lifted something wrong, you know, so I had to be careful. Didn't take anything for it. I really hadn't taken anything for any kind of pain in a minute. I, I just don't like to take pills. I'd rather deal with it naturally, right? So laid on it. And after about the 10 minutes of feeling a tingling, I started feeling a tingling in my head. And I was like, okay, I'm going to relax. So I was like, Let me watch this video again. So I watched it a third time, making sure I ain't missing. I was like, okay, this is normal. Reading all the comments. And I just kind of felt it like radiating through my body and then it stopped but then it kicked in again but it kicked in around the area where the pain was in my lower back like it was like attacking that i could feel it a little bit on the rest of my body but i felt it being concentrated right there i'm like what a smart mat this is right but anyway i slept like a baby last night woke up all the pain in my back and everything was gone i was like yes I got up and told my husband, I said, I'm a believer. I'm about to get a full one for the whole bed. I was like, babe, you got to try this. He said, what? <laughs> he said, what is it? So I explained to him again. He was like, okay. Because my mama was telling him about it too. Uh, but yeah, yo, I'm a believer, right? I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, shoot, everybody need a grounded mat. I'm thinking about 
we're gonna have to do this in increments make sure all the kids got one on their bed make sure they ground them and the little half one i got with the pillow i'm gonna just go ahead and get it to jeremiah because he got you know it'll it'll fit his bed and i'm gonna just get a bigger one for our big bed i'm gonna have to probably get the children one once a month <laughs> so everybody got one yo ugh, i'm a believer and that was just one night i'm a believer i'm a believer so well, let me get let me get started i don't read my mouth enough by this little mat oh it's a grounding mat i'll leave the link it's called the the video is earthing the website is uh i forget the name of it but i'll share it if y'all want to get it i'm telling you, if you're having issues with your body if it's too cold or something outside, you can't go out there and ground yourself. Because remember, our bodies, not they're not just water bodies, but they're electrical as well, right? And the earth is like a big battery. So if we're not connecting to it, like we always got on shoes and everything, we're missing out on some of those great health benefits. Yes, Shirley, it worked that well for me. I was talking to my mama when I was over there the other day. That's, what, um, that's the reason why I bought it. I said... Well, she said Uncle JB had told her about it. So I was like, well, okay. What? <laughs> and so when she was telling me, you know, because she, she was going to physical therapy, uh, where well, she is going to physical therapy because um, some of the issues that she was having or whatever, but she hadn't had to take motion in the last couple of days either for any of the pain. Yes, I will say it works that well. I'm a believer. Trina, hey, girl, hey. I'll leave the link, Dina. Uh, Dina. Dana. Or if you got, matter of fact, let me just see. I think I can just put it up here now. Hold on. Before I get started. Hey, babe. You need to get paid for that. You can't need to get paid. Else you ain't gonna get paid for it. I don't want to get paid. Who don't want to do what? I, I ain't selling their product. It, whatever I said. Hold on. Earthing. Hold on. I hey, be letting them know think, about all the good stuff. Hold on. Is this the website? Do you think 43? Hold on. That's not the website. Looking better than Hold on. Right here. 43 can't look any better than that, baby. I look like 21 year old body. <laughs> 21 years ain't got that. Eight. They sure don't, baby. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. <clears throat> I'm not I done put my messages up here. Yeah, you better only stick your head around and can't go look back upstairs. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. I'm going to put this in here. Front, all the windows open, too. Hold on. <clears throat> this. Hey, no. look at that. I see Hold on, don't distract me. Don't distract me. Don't distract me. You see that right there? Oh, you see that? Mm-hmm. I see it. Hold on, y'all. Here, let me pull this down a little more. You see that? Mr. Murphy. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hold on, y'all. I got this link. Hold on. <clears throat> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. In a few days. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. I got this link for y'all. <laughs> Don't be marketing for free on week. <laughs> Today, I just repeated what you said. You said, "Don't be marketing for free." Hold on, y'all. I asked y'all this ground and this this earthing. I think that's the website, but I, it looks different. That's not. Hold on. I got this, babe. I am. Yeah, I know we are, babe. Hold on. I'm about to take you far. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Ain't you ready to go? Turn it, Dad. Go up my nest. Okay, I got it, y'all. I'm about to get it to you. Here you go, Dana. Okay, ultimatelongevity.com. Okay, say that for later, y'all. I post it here too. <laughs> Trina, don't encourage him. <laughs> Thanks, Trina. <laughs> y'all like she ain't trying to go nowhere. Come on now. <laughs> I'll bring you back. I ain't gonna keep you long. You're talking about make some babies. I ain't gonna keep you long, but come on, dog. Listen, we'll talk about this after I'm done with this, okay? All right, let's open up. <laughs> First, my feet. Don't be throwing me all off. Put it right there. Go close and close. Got <laughs> <laughs> me outside trying to look uh, 
Hold on. You say you feel it down in your lap? Sha na na. Maybe my private dancer. I'll be a private dancer. Dancer for money. <laughs> I, got some, I got some dollars. <laughs> Hold on. Where is my chopper? Mr. Murphy, go upstairs and get dressed. You better be throwing more than some dollars. I'll pay your mortgage. Every <laughs> month. Seven twelve. All right, y'all. Okay, y'all know he come out here and be getting years. me sidetracked. Yo, look. Sixteen years I've been doing a whole lot for you, sugar. Mm, oh yeah, yeah. What, what happened to the rest of the years? Sixteen. Uh huh. Oh, I was trying to get myself together first. Oh well, show you right. I mean, show you right, 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 right. There you go. <laughs> Look at the trenches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to flex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nah, Y'all don't even get me sidetracked. You come down here. <clears throat> all right. All right. Seriously. All this is all going to close. I'm protected by plants. You got all these doggone live plants. Yeah. Going looking like you're sitting in the jungle somewhere. I feel like I'm in the Garden of Eden over here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these plants, though. Yeah. I'm shaded. I don't feel naked. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, beautiful people. I'm covered. First, Michael B's. Chapter 12. Let's talk. Okay, <clears throat> that conversation needs to be held on a different platform. Don't you want to be on this platform? Tarzan. Uh, yeah, that's what it looked like, Dave. I got this big corn plant. Like, you see this one right here. I got another one sitting right here. You got this <laughs> bay right window. I got one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when Jonathan saw that time served him, he chose certain men and sent them to Rome for to confirm and renew the friendship yes. that they had yes. with them. He sent Seraphim also to the last of Don <laughs> to the last of Lacedaemonians and to other places for the same purpose. Mr. Murphy, what are you doing? Like, you're not covered right here. What are you doing? Mm. Stop. Open up some clothes. <clears throat> when one of your children come down here. Like they ain't seen before. <laughs> Hold on. So they went unto Rome and entered into the Senate and said, Jonathan the high priest and the people of the Yahudim sent us unto you to the end that ye should renew friendship. Hold on. <laughs> Girl, he is a mess. Hold on. So they went unto Rome and entered into the Senate and said, Jonathan the high priest and the people of the Yahudim sent us unto you to the end ye should renew the friendship which ye had with them and lead as in former time. Upon this, the Romanim gave them their seraphim unto the governors of every place that they should bring them into the land of Yehuda peaceably. <clears throat> and this is the copy of the seraphim of the, the Sepharim, which Jonathan wrote to the Lacedaemonians, Jonathan the high priest and the elders of the nation and the priests and the other Yahudim unto the Lacedaemonians, their brethren, send greeting. There were seraphim, I'm sorry, I keep calling them seraphim, there were Sepharim sent in times past unto on Yahu, the high priest from Darius, who reigned then among you to signify that ye are our brethren, as the copy here underwritten specifies, at which time on Yahoo entreated the ambassador that was sent honorably and received the sephirim, wherein declaration was made of the league and friendship. Therefore, we also, albeit we need none of these, that we have the holy sephirim of scripture in our hands to comfort us, have nevertheless attempted to send unto you for the renewing of brotherhood and friendship, lest we should become strangers unto you altogether. For there is a long time past since ye sent unto us. We therefore at all times, without ceasing, both in our feasts and other convenient days, do remember you in the sacrifices which we offer, and in our prayers, as reason is, and as it becomes us to think upon our brethren. And we are right glad of your honor. As for ourselves, we have, we have had great troubles and wars on every side. 
for so much as the kings that are round about us have fought against us, howbeit we would not be troublesome unto you, nor unto of our confederates and friends in these wars. For we have help from heaven that helps us, so as we are delivered from our enemies, and our enemies are brought underfoot. For this cause we chose Numenius, the son of Antiochus, and Antipater, the son of Yachon, and sent them unto the Romanim to renew the amity that we had with them and the former league. We commanded them also to go unto you and to salute and to deliver you our suffering concerning the renewing of our brotherhood. Wherefore, now you shall do well to give us an answer thereto. And this is the copy of the suffering which Onaris sent Arius, king of the Lacedaemonians, to Arnehu, the high priest, greeting. It is found in writing that the Lacedaemonians and the Yahudim are brethren, and that they are of the stock of Abraham. Now therefore, since this has come to our knowledge, ye shall do well to write unto us of your prosperity. We do write back again to you that your cattle and goods are ours, and ours are yours. We do command therefore our ambassadors to make report unto you on this wise. Now, when Jonathan heard that Demetrius, that Demetrius's princes were come to fight against him with a great host than afore, he removed from Jerusalem and met them in the land of Kamath, for he gave them no respite to enter his country. He sent spies also into their tents who came again and told him that they were appointed to come upon them in the night season, wherefore so soon as the sun was gone down, Jonathan commanded his men to watch and to be in arms that all night long they might be ready to fight. Also, he sent forth sentinels round about the host. But when the adversaries heard that Jonathan and his men were ready for battle, they feared and trembled in their hearts and they kindled fires in their camp. Howbeit, Jonathan and his company knew it not till morning, for they saw the lights burning. When Jonathan pursued after them, but overtook them not, for they were gone over the river Eleutherus. Wherefore, Jonathan turned to the Avarim, I'm sorry, Aravim, who were called Zabadim, and smote them and took their spools. And removing thence, he came to Damascus and so passed through all the country. Shimon also went forth and passed through the country unto Ashkelon and the holes there adjoining, from whence, from whence he turned aside to Yafo and won it. For he had heard that they would deliver the hold unto them that took Demetrius's part, wherefore he sent a garrison there to keep it. After this came Jonathan home again, and calling the elders of the people together, he consulted with them about building strongholds in Yehuda and making the walls of Jerusalem higher and raising a great mount between the tower and the city for to separate it from the city that so it might be alone that men might neither sell nor buy in it. Upon this, they came together to build up the city for as much as part of the wall toward the brook on the east side was falling down and they repaired that which was called Chaffin. Chaphanatha. Shimon also set up Kadib in Shephelah and made it strong with gates and bars. Now Tryphon went about to get the kingdom of Asia and to kill Antiochus the king that he might set a crown upon his own head. Howbeit he was afraid that Jonathan would not suffer him and that he would not fight against him Wherefore, he sought a way how to take Jonathan, that he might kill him. So he removed and came to Bet Sand. Let me just point out something, the different places that they call out, like Asia. They talk about Asia a lot, right? Where the Maccabees were, which were part of Israel. So, which helps me to further understand that Israel's home is, is, is not really in America, in the Americas, right? Although... They came back and forth across here and some of our people were here. I think the promised land for Israel is over that way, right? Because if, if you read some of the books that hadn't been canonized, it talks about those lands over there, right? So 
Those are my thoughts this day. Levon, blessings, blessings. Okay. Now, when Trifon saw Jonathan came with so great a force, he dared not stretch his hand against him, but received him honorably and commended him unto all his friends and gave him gifts and commanded his men of war to be as obedient unto him as to himself. Unto Jonathan, he also said, why have you brought all this people to so great trouble, seeing there is no war betwixt us? Therefore, send them now home again and choose a few men to wait on you and come with me to Acho, for I will give it to you and the rest of the strongholds and forces and all that have any charge. As for me, I will return and depart, for this is the cause of my coming. So Jonathan believed him. So Jonathan, believing him, did as he bade him and sent away his hosts who went into the land of Yehuda. And with himself, he retained but 3,000 men of whom he sent 2,000 to Gilal and 1,000 went with him. Now, as soon as Jonathan entered into Acho, they of Acho shut the gates and took him and all that came with him and they slew with the sword. Then sent Trifon a host of footmen and horsemen unto Galileo and into the great plain to destroy all of Jehonathan's company. But when they knew that Jonathan and they that were with him were taken and slain, they encouraged one another and they went close together, prepared to fight. They therefore that followed upon them, perceiving that they were ready to fight for their lives, turned back again. Whereupon they all came into the land of Yehuda peaceably, and there they bewailed Jonathan and them that were with him, and they were sore afraid. Wherefore all of Yasharal made great lamentation. Then all the heathen that were round about then sought to destroy them, for said they, they have no captain, nor any to help them. Now therefore let us make war upon them and take away their memorial from among men. Hard head, shalom. Last chapter for today, y'all. First Maccabees chapter 13. Now when Shimon heard that Trifon had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Yehuda and destroy it, and saw that the people were in great trembling and fear, he went up to Yerushalayim and gathered the people together and gave them exhortation, saying, Ye yourselves know what great things I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the Torah and the sanctuary, the battles also, and troubles which we have seen, by reason where, whereof all my brethren are slain for Yasharal's sake, and I am left alone. Now therefore, be it far from me that I should spare my own life in any time of trouble, for I am no better than my brethren. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and our women and our children for all the heathen are gathered together to destroy us of very malice. Now, as soon as the people had heard these words, their Ruach revived or Ruach is another word for spirit, right? Now, as soon as the people heard these words, their spirit revived and they answered with a loud voice saying, you shall be our leader instead of Yehuda and Jonathan, your brother. Fight our battles, and whatsoever you command us, that we will do. So then he gathered together all the men of war and made haste to finish the walls of Yerushalayim, and he fortified it round about. Also he sent Jonathan, the son of Absalom, and with him a great power to Yapho, who casting out them that were therein, remained there in it. So Trifon removed from Acho with a great power to invade the land of Yehuda, and Jonathan was with him inward. But Shimon pitched his tents at Kaid. I'm sorry, Chadid. I think this Chadid. But Shimon pitched his tents at Chadid over against the plain. Now when Trifon knew that Shimon was risen up instead of his brother Jonathan and meant to join battle with him, he sent messengers unto him, saying, Whereas we have Jonathan your brother in hold, for it is for money that he is owing unto the king's treasure concerning the business that was committed unto him. 
Wherefore now send a hundred talents of silver and two of his sons for hostages that when he is at liberty, he may not revolt from us and we will let him go. Whereupon Shimon, albeit he perceived that they spoke deceitfully unto him, yet he sent the money and the children, lest perchance he should procure to himself great hatred of the people who might have said, because I sent him not the money and the children, therefore Jonathan is dead. So he sent them the children <clears throat> and the hundred talents. Howbeit, Tryphon dissembled, neither would he let Jonathan go. And after this came Tryphon to invade the land and destroy it, going round about the way that leads unto Adorim. But Shimon and his host marched against him in every place, wheresoever he went. Now they that were in the tower sent messengers unto Tryphon, <clears throat> excuse me, to the end that he should hasten his coming unto them by the wilderness and send them victuals. Hold on, I need to see the order. <clears throat> Lindsay, yeah, shalom. Okay. <clears throat> Clear my voice. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Wherefore, Tryphon made ready all his horsemen to come that night, but there fell a great snow by reason whereof he came not. So he departed and came into the country of Gilead. And when he came near to Baskama, he slew Jonathan, who was buried there. After Tryphon returned and went afterward, Tryphon returned and went to his own land. <clears throat> then sent Shaman and took the bones of Jonathan his brother, and buried them in Modin, the city of his fathers. And all of Yasharal made great lamentation for him and bewailed him many days. Shimon also built a monument upon the sepulchre of his father and his brethren and raised it aloft to the site with hewn stone behind and before. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids, one against another, for his father and his mother and his four brethren. And in these he made cunning devices about which he set great pillars. And upon the pillars he made all their armor for a perpetual memory, and by the armor ships carved, that they might be seen of all that sail on the sea. This is the sepulchre which he made at Modin, and it stands yet until this day. <clears throat> now Tryphon dealt deceitfully with the young king Antiochus and slew him, and he reigned in his stead and crowned himself king of Asia, and brought a great calamity upon the land. Then Shimon built up the strongholds in Yehuda and fenced them about with high towers and great walls and gates and bars and laid up victuals therein. Moreover, Shimon chose men and sent to King Demetrius to the end that he should give the land an immunity because all that Tryphon did was to spoil. Unto whom King Demetrius answered and wrote after this manner, King Demetrius unto Shimon the high priest and friend of kings and also unto the elders and the nation of the Yahudim sends greeting. The golden crown, the scarlet robe, which he sent unto us, we have received. We are ready to make a steadfast peace with you, yea, and to write unto our officers to confirm the immunities which we have granted. And whatsoever covenants we have made with you shall stand. And the strongholds which ye have built shall be your own. As for any oversight or fault committed unto this day, we forgive it. And the crown tax also which ye owe us. And if there be any other tribute paid in Jerusalem, it shall no more be paid. <clears throat> and look who are meet among you to be in our court. Let then be enrolled and let there be peace betwixt us. Thus the yoke of the heathen was taken away from Yasharal in the hundred and seventieth year. Then the people of Yasharal began to write in their instruments and contracts in the first year of Shimon the high priest, the governor and leader of the Yahudim. In those days, Shimon camped against Gaza and besieged it round about. He made also an engine of war and set it by the city and battered a certain tower and took it and they that were in the engine leaped into the city whereupon there was a great uproar in the city so much so 
as the people of the city rent their robes and climbed upon the walls with their women and children and cried with a loud voice, beseeching Shimon to grant them peace. And they said, deal not with us according to our wickedness, but according to your mercy. So Shimon was appeased towards them and fought no more against them, but put them out of the city and cleansed the houses wherein the idols were. And so entered into it with songs and thanksgiving. Yea, he put all uncleanliness out of it and placed such men there as would guard the Torah and made it stronger than it was before and built therein a dwelling place for himself. They also of the tower in Yerushalayim were kept so straight that they could neither come forth no, nor go into the country, nor buy nor sell, wherefore they were in great distress for want of victuals, and a great number of them perished through famine. Then cried they to Shimon, beseeching him to be at one with them, which thing he granted them, and when he had put them out from thence, he cleansed the tower from pollutions and entered into it in three and twentieth day, the second month, and the hundred seventieth and first year, with thanksgiving and branches of palm trees, and with harps and cymbals, and with viols and hymns and songs, because there was destroyed a great enemy out of Yasharal. He ordained also that that day should be kept every year with gladness. Moreover, the hill of the temple that was by the tower, he made stronger than it was, and there he dwelt himself with his company. And when Shimon saw that Yukonan, his son, was a valiant man, he made him captain of all the hosts, and he dwelt in Gazim. All right, beautiful people, that is our reading for today. That's First Maccabees chapter 12 and 13. Well, we finish we finish this tomorrow because it's only um it's 16 chapters so we're gonna read these last three tomorrow they are not that long 14 is 49 verses 15 is 41 verses and 16 is 24 verses and then we'll hop right into the second book of maccabees so we'll be done with this pretty quick and after that i think we read everything else I think we read all the books in the Apocrypha. I think. Don't quote me on that. I think we missed some. I know we read Enoch. We read, did we read Jasher and Jubilees like all the way through page for page? I don't know that I'm going to read it though. But I, we pulled out a lot. I read a lot of them chapters towards the beginning because they lined up uh, with Genesis. So I was reading them simultaneously. Morning, son. All right, y'all. So let's hop on over here to the walk of the spirit, the walk of power, and get back into this. Um, hold on. I don't think she's here. Let's see. Go tell your dad I said, look at his messages. Oh. Okay. I ain't going to be able to do it while I'm live. Adaya, shalom, shalom. Let me pull this up. I don't think I can do this while I'm up here. Hold on, I'm pulling it up. I need to look at something real quick. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right, y'all. Here we go. <clears throat> Chapter four. Nope. 
Okay. <clears throat> Remember, each chapter starts off with this little word of prophecy. Linda, morning, morning. All right. So it says, when I call you and separate you through ordination to an operation that I place you in, my power will qualify you to fulfill that office from within. For I have made all things possible to him who believeth. Therefore, approach not my presence in your own understanding or the ideals, creeds, and doctrines as men will put them forth. For I place within you an anointing that cannot lie. That anointing is truth and will teach you all things. Yield yourself to my spirit for the purposes of edification, and I will lift you up. I will build you unto every operation that I have separated you unto, and I will qualify you by my power. All right, and the first section is entitled Diversities of Tongues in God's Government. <clears throat> We've seen, and if you don't have a copy of it, I post a, I always post a link, but it's a free PDF copy of this book if you don't have the hardback. You can get a hardback from Amazon, but they they trying to get people with that price. I, I haven't looked at it since we first started reading it, but it was like $100, and that's ridiculous, right? And when the author made it free. So I shared the free PDF link so you can download it. But if you want to get the hardback, I recommend you don't get it from Amazon. Find another place that's selling it for like $12, $13. She's telling you to get it off of Amazon. No, I'm not. I just said don't get it from Amazon because it's a hundred dollars. Don't, don't, don't. Hey. You got it free. And other book companies, the ones that have it on Amazon, are gouging people. For some reason, they see that there's a a, a demand for it, <clears throat> so they jack their price up. Don't do that. I hate when people do that. Right? It's the demand. Other it's people. Uh, other so people. Mm, yeah. It's just like a thing. You're getting your bang for your buck. Cause I get that, but don't do that to people. You can Amazon is not the only seller on the block. That but well, I mean, I was about to say the book ain't worth a hundred dollars. The information in it, mm, I would say so. But I'm saying if you got other avenues to go get it, get it. And I provided it for you. So back to the reading. Okay. Well, son, pay attention to your food. Diversities of tongues in God's government. We've seen that the diversities of tongues is an entire operation of God placed in God's government to serve a crucial purpose. To deny it is to deny the perfecting of his body. So let's find out more about the role of diversities of tongues in God's government and the reason God would designate an entire operation to it. I want you to understand what he has made available to us through this awesome gift of speaking with tongues, a gift that Satan has deceived many into believing, is either obsolete or insignificant. And just in case you didn't hear me the last couple of videos, it's a Christian guy, right? And he's explaining this from the way he understands and he's using Christian lingo, right? But this is something that's a universal law and happens everywhere, which I'm going to prove to you and I'm going to show to you, which is why... We're going to, oh, yeah, Thrift Books Online, $10. Yes, go to Thrift Books, get it for $10. Which after we get done reading this one, I'm going to show you how the different cultures actually practice this. They just call it something different, but they tap into the spirit of Yah or to the great spirit the same way. They just call it something different, right? But everybody doing the same thing. This is not something that's completely set aside for Christianity. It is absolutely not, right? Okay. The unique nature of diversities of tongues. There is only one operation we can fulfill immediately after we are born again. The eighth operation of diversities of tongues. Yes, yeah, so you know, this doesn't have to happen. He says the moment we receive Jesus as Savior, we can also receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and begin to speak with other tongues which begins our spiritual qualification for any and all the other operations which we may be called. You don't, remember. Oh, sweet. That's good, Linda. 
Yeah, so you can really just ask y'all. Like, you don't have to go through the middleman and stuff. Like, Christianity makes you take second steps to get back to y'all. When y'all say, just come directly to me, right? Like, seriously. Okay. A person cannot become a mighty apostle or a prophet five minutes after he is born again, even if that is what he is called to be. He first must become qualified, trained, and prepared, and seasoned by the Spirit of Yah, and seize it by the spirit of Yah before he will separate him to the office he is called to. That is true with any of the first seven operations listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Now everyone is qualified to teach Yah's word. You can tell by the people who nod off to sleep while some ministers teach. A person can't immediately enter into a full-blown ministry operating in the working of miracles or gifts of healings either. In every one of the first seven operations, including helps and governments, a person must first be found faithful and receive the equipping of Yah's spirit before he can fulfill the operation to which he is called. On the other hand, a person can move into the eighth operation instantaneously with his with his rebirth, or I would say with the asking of Yah. When he gives it to you, you can just begin to operate in it. You know Suppose the person... What you say? You know what Christianity is? We already know what it is, Jeremiah. Everybody here know what it is. We ain't got to teach them. It's like preaching to the choir. We all, we all know what it is. Yeah. Suppose the per. Suppose the person responds to an altar call and says, I received Jesus as Savior. Then someone steps up and says to him, you just received God's nature. Now you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He asks, what are you talking about? He learns that because his, he learns that because his spirit just became the receptor of a new nature, he is now able to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I like to be filled with the Holy Ghost, he says. They receive the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. All of a sudden, the person's chin starts shaking. Speak it out, he is instructed. That's, that's if you want to come across the church. Speak it out. His mouth starts forming words. And soon, he is speaking in tongues. He dances around for days, speaking in his new language with great joy. <clears throat> Why did God design it that way? Why are tongues available to us instantaneously with our rebirth? Because praying in tongues has everything to do with our becoming prepared and qualified for our particular calling. And as we pray in tongues, Yah's spirit is able to build into our hearts, bless you, the understanding of his will for our personal lives. Sometimes people get the baptism of the Holy Ghost mixed up with the new birth. However, there is a great difference between being born again and receiving the indwelling fullness of Yah's spirit. The Holy Sp Yeah, I don't agree with this anymore. Hold on, look. It's, it's, it's Yah, whether you're looking at him. I'm going I'm to read what he said. And then I'm going a, I'm, I'm to a tell you what I know from my better understanding today. He says, the Holy Spirit is a person just as each of us is a person. When we are born again, we receive him in a creative process that calls us to become new creations. But we didn't receive him in his fullness until we were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now he lives inside of us, partnering with us in prayer, empowering our lives, and bringing revelation of the word as we walk in obedience to God. I do not believe that. It's always just Yah. Right? Because you got to think about it. It's funny because me and a girlfriend was talking about this very thing last night. We weren't even talking about this book. We were talking about this and how people try to explain away like the the um, the um three-in-one Godhead and stuff. And that's not something you came up with. That's something that's been passed down to you. Those are not even your own thoughts. You're just regurgitating the garbage that's been peddled out to you. Everybody gives like that saying, okay, so it was like this. Uh, I'm one person. But I'm a mother, a sister, and a friend. Like, no, that's garbage. That is not that is not what it is. You're trying to explain it away. It's just always been y'all, right? You don't need to divide him up into multiple people. He said, I am one. I am Mekhod, right? That's the first, that's the first thing y'all started dealing with me with. 
when he was trying to get rid of all the extra people, right? He said, I am Echad. So he led me on a study to research Echad, right? Meaning one. In the Shema, every day, listen, O Israel, Yahuwah, our God, he is one God. Because remember, all the other nations were worshiping multiple gods. The source of our power comes from one direction, one being, right? It's one source of power. He is one. Israel, remember, listen, pay attention. Yah is one God. He's not divided. He's one, right? Every single day we read that. Just make sure you got it deep down in your sha -na -na, down in your spirit. sha -na, na is another word that I use for spirit. So, yeah, it does. It starts to get really messy when you try to do that. So, that's why when he hits upon this, I know we didn't already discuss it, but just in case somebody pop in, they still believe that we want to make it clear, right? We don't believe in the Trinity, the duality. He's one, one source of power, right? And everything flows from him. Now, when people start doing, using the power differently, remember the the, um, the example he gave yesterday? It's one source of power, but everything in my everything in my house, everything that powers my house comes from one power plant, right? It my refrigerator acts a different way than what my stove acts as, right? One heats, one cools. I got a microwave, then I got a blender, and I got a food processor, and I got a coffee maker. Each is deriving its power from the same source, but the output that they give and how they operate is a little bit different, right? Same way. You can also take that power and misuse it, right? So people are taking the power. Remember, y'all say, I create good and I create evil. What they're doing, they're connected to the source of power, but they're they're misusing and they're they're putting it out in the world, and it gets really really messy. And people start labeling those, those that misuse of power from the one source as multiple different gods, right? Y'all gets real messy when you realize there is only one source of power. I create good and I create evil. The 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 the, the obvious variable is those who's using the power, right? So you got those of us who's using their power in appropriate ways for to help us, to better our lives, to help other people. And you have people connected to that source of power that's prostituting that power, right? Scaring people, telling you it's the devil and all these other kind of crazy. They're they they misusing the source of power because we're all connected to one. However you put it out, it's how people going to get it. Which is why you have to make sure your own vessel is pure and clean and holy. Even in the other nations. When you get to the root of their teaching, most of them, the, the more ancient teachings, mind you, they all taught you that there was one source of power, right? They all taught you that there was one source of power, one creator. They all, well, not the newer ones. The newer ones kind of get into some other rigmarole. But like the other, like the ancient, ancient ones, like ancient Kemet. And when you hear Kemet today, you got people that's teaching it wrong, right? Not the, the, the newly come Kemet, right? Ancient Kemet, which they've named to ancient Egypt, right? They taught that there was one source of power, right? They were pure and holy. Their priesthood and priestesshood, they were actually pure and holy people. And they literally taught the world. The different nations just took that and they just abused it. They misused it. And they're, they're, they're prostituting the source of power, right oh yeah look i like how you said that the day the law first mentioned i remember the first time i heard that the law first mentioned when my, when my uncle was teaching me about it go back to where it first started right yeah so people don't get that they misuse and they abuse the power and now it's all prostituted here in the land you got all kind of crazy teachings right so but there is one source of power depending on who it flows through how it flows and operate, you will know if they're abusing that power, misusing that power, if they're using it appropriately to build, to create, right? He gave us access to his power so we could do like he do. We could be creators like he create, right? A God created gods. He created his children. He want us to operate how he operate and gave us a whole world to practice it, right? But if you're not taught appropriately and you don't, you don't you don't keep the commands the commands are not there to put you in bondage it's to give you a guideline on how to stay on the right path and do things appropriately so you can get the desired outcome now when you begin to 
fall off the path, go wayward, not keep to the instructions, uh, things tend to get really, really messy, right? Okay. It is God's will that the moment we're born again, we lift our hands in submission and, and praise to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the very best way to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But the devil has managed to separate the new birth from the baptism of the Holy Spirit through divisions of doctrines so that now, as a rule, the two experiences don't occur together. All right. The next section is called the miracle of tongues in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Actually, the devil does whatever he can to prevent people from ever receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. For example, many times I minister to people who have been in a hundred other prayer lines seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but who have always left disappointed. They respond when I make an altar call. Let's take it with you. Okay. Thank you. For example, I, I'm sorry. For example, many times I minister to people who have been in a hundred other prayer lines seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but who have always left disappointed. They respond when I make an altar call and like so many ministers before me, I pray for them. Their mouth moves, but they make no sounds. So I encourage them by saying, why don't you just speak out of why don't you just speak out what your lips are already mouthing? The majority of those who take my suggestion immediately begin to speak in tongues. Why is that? Because the moment the person because the moment Yah fills a believer with his spirit, the first thing he does is starts creating the supernatural language of tongues on the inside of the believer's spirit for his own personal edification. In my own experience, the first evidence that I was baptized in the Holy Spirit was what Isaiah 28, 11 called stammering lips. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people. Matter of fact, somebody was saying, they actually gave this scripture the other day um, when we were talking about this, saying that tongues weren't found in the Old Testament. And I wasn't talking about this although people go to this because they do a real quick google or quick bible search you ain't gonna find it when you bible search you just get like the basic topical stuff you don't really begin to see it until you actually begin to take time to study and then you can actually see it happening within the stories right so but most people who um try and tell you that it's not back there they're gonna they're gonna quick fact check you and they're gonna run a search Either they're going to go to Google, is speaking in tongues found in the Old Testament, or the Old Testament scripture speaking in tongues, or they're going to go to the Bible app itself, and they're going to put something in, they're going to probably search the wrong term, trying to fact check you real quick, and tell you you're wrong, that it's not back there, um, but they they always, they half the time, well most of the time, they always going to be off, right? Because if you don't take time to study, you just, you just don't see it coming out between the lines, right? Okay, but he said, in my own experience, the first evidence that I was baptized in the Holy Spirit was what Isaiah 28, 11 called stammering lips. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people. One night when I came to the altar to the altar to be filled with the Holy Spirit, something came over me. All of a sudden, my chin, mouth and tongue all started to move. My mouth seemed to be out of control. I thought, what's the matter with my mouth? I didn't know that the moment I said, fill me with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost had begun to create his supernatural words in my spirit. So the words came out stammering lips because I was afraid to say them out loud. I was sure it would just be me speaking. I didn't realize that my mouth was actually shaping an entire supernatural language of the Holy Spirit. But later, I was worshiping God at home and the Holy Spirit came upon me again. My mouth began to move the same way it had that night at church. And still, he's still, he's still separating the spirit of Yah and the presence of Yah, putting him into a third person, right? And, and that is not the case, y'all. But I'm just going to keep bringing it out. I, I get it. Christian guy. Okay, bro. However, 
by this time I had learned about Acts 2 and 4, which says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this time, instead of fighting off the urge to speak out those words, I yielded to the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. And the longer I yielded, the more the Holy Ghost rivers of living water poured out of me. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And that's John chapter 7, verse 38 and 39. And even with this, that that whole that whole verse should be at least the last half of that should be stricken out, right? Because Yahuwah's people was filled with His Spirit before Jesus came. Like they were being filled with His Spirit, and they were speaking out, right? You don't need this extra step in here that they add adding stuff in here. Because what about the prophets? The prophets they say, oh, well, the Holy Spirit rested on them and not. In them, well, I beg to differ. That that is not that is not what it said. It that's, that's not what it said. And they did supernatural things back in that day as well, right? Supernatural things were happening. Matter of fact, there is way more miracles that happened back in the Old Testament than what JC did, right? So it wasn't long before I was speaking a full prayer language by the power of the Holy Spirit. Benefits of praying in tongues. Now, if God, the Holy Spirit, literally creates this language in our spirit, what kind of prayer could it possibly be? What benefits could it possibly hold for us? We've already seen some of, some of the benefits of praying in other tongues, and we'll discuss several of them in depth later on. But I want to just mention a few of the benefits right now. For one thing, the Holy Spirit came into our spirit to bring us revelation to bring us revelation knowledge of the cross and everything that Jesus has become to us. Yeah, he, I don't believe that anymore, right? Because first of all, everything Jesus did was complete blasphemy against the Torah of what you would say. <laughs> well, I think the, I think the speaking in tongues they do in modern churches today is gibberish, honestly. Some of them dark night, it, it, they acting a fool up in the house of the Lord. They are, and some of them are speaking a bunch of gibberish, right? But true, authentic uh, praying in tongues is another language that uh, that particular nation will understand. You could be set, you could, the spirit of Yah could come upon you or begin to speak through you or you just begin to pray and your language within that nation of the language you speak and they will understand what you say. Matter of fact, they can interpret to you what you said to them, right? If you're talking to them. All right. For one thing, yeah. I see. No, I read it already. Hold on. Also, on the day you and I spoke with tongues, a viable, powerful working of Yahuwah's government came into operation within our spirit, designed to give us and cause us to understand what no man can give us through natural means, spiritual authority. This spiritual power and authority is the means Yahuwah gives us to overcome torment, worry, fear, and the hopelessness that can take over our lives when we move from one overwhelming situation to another, continually losing ground. Praying in tongues also supplies the power to overcome character flaws, those deep-seated character traits that keep cropping up and robbing us of our stamina, and initiative to overcome in the face of common testings and trials that precede almost every major victory and promotion by God. So like if they're like I say character flaws, it really will. But you have to show the discipline and actually praying in tongues, right? That's why I say everybody should be doing at least twenty four minutes. Type twenty four minutes of your twenty four hour day and just go pray in tongues, right? Make it a habit. When you make it a habit and you do it consistently, you will begin to see the fruits of it. Now, the longer you pray in tongues at each sitting, it will increase the, the speed at which you see results, right? Um, but if you're disciplined with it, it will actually begin to work for you. So if you're struggling with character flaws, such as, let's say, pornography, it will give you the strength to overcome, 
right? It really will strengthen you. Other things, uh, any other type of addiction things, it will help you a great deal. I use it from personal experience. I can tell you the truth. Men and women suffer from some of the same addictions, right? They do not uh, discriminate, right? And neither does your prayer language. It will help you if you show yourself disciplined enough to put your tool to work, right? The more you learn how to use your tool, the more proficient you become, the better you get, right? The same thing will happen as your spirit is fine-tuned. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know, people. All right. Praying in tongues always affects us in a positive way. God says that it edifies us. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. In Jude chapter 20, he says that it builds us up on our most holy faith. As we faithfully spend time praying in tongues, our lives begin to be transformed. Oh, they extra early today. The word of God begins to come alive as we place our spirit. I'm sorry. The word of God begins to come alive as we place our spirit, the candle of the Lord, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, into the hands of the expert illuminator. Thank you. I'll get that in a minute. Okay. We need to understand the one whom the father. Yeah, see this. Listen, this is what he said. We need to understand the one whom the father turned us over for whom the father turned us over for our instruction. The one to whom we can lend our spirit in prayer. Remember, this is the third person of the Trinity himself, the Holy Spirit of promise who has filled us. I do not agree with that anymore. It is not. It is Yah himself. It has always been him, right? He is omniscient and he's omnipresent, meaning he can be everywhere at all times. It's always him, right? You do not need all the extra people when you can talk directly to him, right? Okay. We should consider it our privilege and heart's desire to lock ourselves away with Yah in prayer. He has no problems or concerns of his own to pray about. He is not the one who needs illumination. Yes. You're going to have to wait. Don't do that. Yet, he is more than willing to pray through us for all that concerns us. He is eager to teach us and guide us into all truth. John sixteen thirteen. It doesn't matter what kind of carnal state we are in when we are first born again. It doesn't matter if we've been stealing money, lying, drinking whiskey, or stalking women down dark alleys. When we are baptized in Yah's spirit, that first simple little gift of speaking in other tongues goes into operation for one reason, to edify or build us up. That's why we are not to wait to pray in tongues until we feel sufficiently spiritual. I would agree with that. I'm just saying, put it into practice. When you put it into practice, you will see the benefits of it. That I cannot deny. But Brother Robeson, I live a carnal lifestyle that can change. Y'all wants to bring you from here, from there to here, from a life of carnality to a life of freedom and victory. That's why his spirit came, bringing his supernatural language with him. No matter how spiritual or unspiritual you may feel, when you start praying in tongues, you have begun the edification process. Perry Shalom. The next section is, he gave gifts unto all men. And I know we over the hour mark, but... I want to finish this chapter, y'all. So we'll be here for a few more minutes. Okay. But if you got to go to work, go on here and get out of here. Caesar waiting for you. He gave gifts to all men. So let's go back now to Ephesians chapter 4 to take a closer look at God's design for the working of his body. It will help us understand the role of diversities of tongues in God's government. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of him unto a perfect man until the measure and the stature of the fullness in Yah. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 10 through 13. During the 80s, I sat under a lot of teaching on this passage of scripture. This is how I was taught. 
Jesus ascended on high and he gave the fivefold ministry offices as a gift to the church. For what purpose? For the perfecting of the saints so that each and every believer can do the work of the ministry, which then brings edification to the body. Does this interpretation sound familiar? Well, I tell you what this teaching did for us ministers. Almost everywhere we went to minister, the congregation treated us as if we were the president of the United States. I must admit that I didn't mind riding the wave of all that glory, especially in my more carnal early years. I enjoyed the fire out of it. At camp meetings, we ministers would be introduced something like this. Jesus ascended on high and led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And now let's welcome one of those gifts to the body of Christ, evangelist and teacher Dave Robeson. Everybody didn't hear that kind of introduction, right? Somewhere deep inside, a thought lurked that didn't even articulate to myself, you poor little peasants. I was singled out as a special gift to you for your maturing so you could do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. But the whole reason you're being edified and matured is the great gift that resides down on the inside of me. I began to think I was something special. Thank God since he has, thank God since then he has healed me of that unhealthy attitude. I could always tell which churches had received the governmental teachings on the body of Christ because I was always treated very respectfully in those churches. For instance, I had I have had a Rolls Royce assigned to me for my transportation and a man put on duty in the next room to mine just in case I got a whim at two o'clock in the morning for an ice cream cone. I would be lying to you if I said that I didn't like that kind of treatment. But some of us ministers begin to expect that kind of special treatment as our God-given right. If everything in the hotel room wasn't just right, we wanted to complain. Where is my super duper fruit basket? Where is the guy who was supposed to be in the next room just waiting to drive me to the meeting? I can remember feeling insulted if the host church didn't have a car parked in front immediately after the services so I could go out and get in it. My wife was the first one to really recognize my wrong attitude. We were ministering at a big camp meeting in Omaha, Nebraska with several big name ministers. I was the low man on the totem pole, so I was given the afternoon services, the time when most people want to eat and nap between meetings, but I didn't mind, even though most of the other guest ministers never attended my meetings. Then God began moving mightily in those afternoon services. The man in charge came to me and said, we would like you to receive the offerings at every service. So from then on at every service, I would get up and teach a little from the word and then receive the offering. But the minister scheduled to preach never came into the service until after the offering was taken. It was starting to bother me. One evening, Rosalie and I were riding in the elevator and someone attending the camp meeting spouted out to me above the heads of the people. Boy, the other ministers ought to hear you teach. I replied sourly. Yeah, if they hung around long enough, they would. My wife caught the prideful attitude behind my response and took me to task about it later. But you see, the teaching I was receiving on God's government wasn't helping my attitude. Every time I heard Ephesians 4 taught that way, my head would get a little fatter as I became a little more convinced that I was a special gift to the body. Thank God, if we keep praying in the Holy Ghost and speaking the mysteries to the Father, He will straighten us out. God sent me for a long run on a show... <laughs> God sent me for a long run on a short rope and jerked the slack out of me regarding my wrong pride for attitude. He revealed to my spirit the role that the other operations, including diversities of tongues, play in his government. I was so shocked when I first understood what he was saying. I said, oh, Lord, you weren't exalting us ministers at all. You see, it's good to give honor where honor is due and to show respect to a minister of the gospel. But if you think that his calling is more honored than yours, think again. God is no respecter of persons. 
you are also a precious gift to the body of Christ. Whatever your calling or office, it is every bit as important as a minister's calling in God's eyes. You should be treated with just as much respect as any minister is shown. So what is Paul saying in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 10 through 12? Well, to understand that, you have to look back at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27 and 28 where Paul says something very similar. First, he says, now ye are the body and members in particular. Compare that with Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure and the gift of Yah. So in context, Paul is referring to the entire body in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27. Then in verse 28, Paul says, and God has set some in the church. And he goes on to list all eight operations of God. Just as in Ephesians 4.11, he begins with a five-fold ministry. Then he goes on to list helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. You see, when... Yeah, see. There are shenanigans again. I'm going to read what it said, but y'all know how I feel about this. But listen to how he be trying to tie this in. You see, when Jesus ascended on high, he presented his shed blood to the Father for the redemption of mankind sat down at the right hand of the Father and said, it is finished. Then he began to fill all in all the entire body of Christ with his gifts. Now, I'm going to say something about it, right? First of all, it's an abomination. You who has said not every righteous man will ever die for the sins of the wicked, right? And that's what they had Jesus to do. Completely violate everything that y'all had said. When you who has said, I simply want you to do what's right, right? So even when you get that supernatural language, you ain't got to go into a church and be born again and ask the Holy Spirit. You can just ask y'all. You can be living somewhere out in the boonies or whatever. Never even heard of the word church, but you know that there's a creator. And you can like cry out and just talk to the creator and he will talk back to you, right? People get all twisted up when they go to evangelize the entire world and bring Jesus Christ to the world, right? Them people were doing just fine talking to their creator, talking to him and him talking back to them before they tried to evangelize them and put extra steps in what they was doing. That's how people started getting all chopped and screwed, right? Got everybody violating the creator, killing people. You ain't good enough. We're going to get somebody that's nice and clean and wholesome for you. He going to die for your sins. Y'all was like, you know, I don't care if you do. Noah can't save his kids. Neither can such and such, he he labeled them out, right? He said, even if they were standing before me, I would not accept them on the behalf of the sins of their sons and daughters. Their sons and daughters would die for their own wickedness. They're going to die for their own sins. But those who are righteous, they'll save their own butts. Their righteousness will save them, right? I'm just saying. Y'all should go read it sometime. It's there. Read it a lot. When you read that and it actually clicks... You're going to start realizing just how many stumbling blocks have been put in your way, right? Okay, I'm just saying. But thanks be to y'all. He is a... He understands the ignorance. So a lot of times, even when he still answers our prayers, we still attribute it to Jesus and to Allah and to, to other people, Right? But you who know we ignorant, and in a, in our ignorance, a lot of times he will still answer us, right? But he is leading you on the path to open your eyes, to illuminate you, to let you know, hey, it's been me all the time, right? It's been me all the time. Ain't no extra people. Everything come from me. Just like he told Israel. Israel was so busy going out to other lovers, thinking that the gifts came from them. He said everything Israel had came from me, right? All right. That's the same. Everywhere all the way across the world. All right. Three categories of gifts for three purposes. Now let's look at the divine sequence found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. We know that Jesus only ascended on high once and gave gifts unto men, which we just, we talked about that. But for the sake of teaching you how 1 Corinthians 12, 28 ties into Ephesians 4, 11, Let's just say that, hypothetically speaking, 
Jesus ascended on high in three different phases, one time for each of the three categories of gifts. The first time, Jesus grabbed a handful of fivefold ministry gifts and threw them down to the body of Christ. A whole group of people stood up to receive the gifts. One said, oh my gosh, I'm an apostle to the body. Another said, I am separated to the office of the prophet. Someone else said, I am called to be an evangelist. Others exclaimed, the gift of teaching has landed on me, or I am called to be a pastor. Those who were called to these ministry offices stood up, recognized their calling, and said, we have received grace for this. For what purpose did he give these ministry offices? He gave them for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints. Ephesians chapter 4 and 12. Those in the fivefold ministry are supposed to supply the body with a revelation knowledge they receive from the Lord. They are to minister the word of God to bring the saints from spiritual milk to meat. In this way, the saints can mature until their transformation is complete. Then let's just say Jesus looked over the body and said, the fivefold ministry offices are not enough for the smooth operation of the body of Christ. I must ascend and grab another handful. So this in hypothetical illustration, he ascended on high a second time. I'm sorry. So in this hypothetical illustration, he ascended on high a second time. He grabbed another handful of gifts and threw them down into the body. This time, thousands upon thousands of people stood up and said, why am I called to help or why I'm called to help or I received the gift of governments. And to these, Jesus said, good for you. I have given you your grace and it is just as much a gift to my church as the apostle or prophet. And what do helps and governments do in the body of Christ? They fulfill the second purpose listed in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12. They do the work of the ministry. But as Jesus looked over the body one more time, he said, it isn't enough. My people still have to learn to operate out of my spirit. So he ascended one more time to finish the equipping of the body of Christ. This time he grabbed the eighth operation of God, diversities of tongues, and threw it into the entire body. Every person in the body should have stood up and received this gift. Why? Because the most important manifestation of diversities of tongues is a direct operation of the Holy Spirit within the believer's spirit to edify himself. That is the purpose that this one operation fulfills. It is given for the edification of the saints until what happens? Until we all come into the until we all come into the unity of the faith. Until we quit being deceived by the cunning craftiness of men. Until we fulfill our call, speaking the truth in love. And if you go to other religions or other cultures, they're going to teach you this. But they're going to use uh they're going to use a a different story to teach you, right? Marie, shalom. Meryl, I'm about to time you out. You in time out for posting that link. Okay. All right. I'm timed out for 300 seconds if you're still here. Don't come here dropping links and rolling. I'm going to time you out and block you. Stop it. Every one of us is supposed to receive this operation because if we're ever going to come into the unity of the faith, we must learn how to release the power of the Holy Spirit, our teacher who dwells inside of us, which is Yah, right? Yah is the teacher. He is more than willing to pray hour after hour in divine secrets and mysteries to help us to prepare spiritually for the operation which he has set us at. Hold on. He is able to help us prepare spiritually for the operation to which he separated us at our rebirth. I keep, I hate to keep repeating this. So when Jesus ascended on high, he gave three categories of gifts for three separate purposes. The fivefold ministry for the maturing of the saints, helps in the governments for the work of the ministry, and diversities of tongues for the edifying of the body. See chart on page 79. These three categories were given so that we would all come into the unity of faith and the fullness of the knowledge of Yah. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> I'm looking at this chart. So if you don't have it, you probably should. This is a chart he was talking about. <clears throat> I don't know. That might be backwards. But anyway. Hold on. Um, let me hold it up here for youtube just in case you don't have it right so it's just giving like an organization chart 
of the gifts and how they flow down, right? From the explanation that he just gave. <clears throat> okay. Attaining the unity of the faith. The devil has tried to utterly confuse the church regarding the subject of tongues. He wants us to get so discouraged that we just quit using this divine gift. Yet of the three categories of gifts given unto men, God designated an entire category to one lone operation, the diversities of tongues. That one operation holds a third of the categories in it that it takes to bring the body into the unity of the faith. Think about that next time someone tells you that it doesn't do any good to pray in tongues or that you can pray too much in tongues. Therefore, it will behoove us to find out from his word the important role of this operation is to play in our lives. The truth is, if all we ever fulfilled in his body was the eighth operation of the diversities of tongues, we would still be a gift to the body for the edification of the saints. But no matter what other operation we are called by God to fulfill, we have access to this third category and the edification it provides as we pray in tongues. Yet despite the importance God places on diversities of tongues, many in the body want to downplay or even exclude it. But if the category Jesus gave for edifying of the saints is excluded, how are we ever going to come into the unity of the faith? It should probably be taught appropriately. It takes all three categories of gifts, fulfilling all three purposes listed in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, for the body to arrive at the place of unity God intended. And as each measure of the gift of Christ fulfills his or her call, the body of Christ will begin to stand up unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Why is all this necessary? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 and 15 tells us that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him all things which is the head, even Christ. Isn't it interesting why we need these gifts that Jesus gave unto men that, that Yah made available to everybody on the face of the planet that's born into this realm. We need them so we won't be deceived by the cunning craftiness of men. We also need them so we can be purged of all lying and start speaking the truth. When we are speaking the truth in purity of spirit, we're not being deceived anymore. We can then start the qualification process for our calling, the empowerment of spiritual gifts. And that, my beautiful people, is the end of chapter four. And that is our reading for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me get myself a note here. All right, y'all. So remember, if you come in late, remember, we're reading this, but we're going to also see this gift in operation and, um, and all... This gift and operation along with meditation, which he's he's going to get into as well. And he's going to add some other um, things in there that you can add along with praying in tongues and meditation, which will, will, which will make your vehicle of praying in tongues. Like praying in tongues is like an airplane, right? It's faster than a car. Just taking a car is like regular praying in your own language, right? Praying in tongues is like taking a plane. But when you add fasting and meditation to your praying in tongues, it's like a rocket ship, right? It's different tools to get you to different destinations or to the same destination. It just gets you there faster, right? So by doing all of this together, which y'all talks about in the Old Testament, you can still pull some, some good nuggets out of the New Testament, even though it has all its shenanigans. If you're able to separate truth from error, you can learn from anything, right? So, but that's why, like I said, we're not just going to use the Christian book. We'll show you how it's being done in different areas, different backgrounds of the world, right? And they're not using a bunch of church language, right? I know this, y'all, I be saying y'all going to get triggered by it, but I'm being triggered when I read it, right? Because I try to get all the, the church lingo out, right? I just... I just feel a certain type of way towards it now. Not that I don't love the people because I do, right? I was there. But I'm really trying to 
get all the church lingo out because a lot of times if you're not talking to other church people you can't even really talk to other people especially using a bunch of the church lingo and stuff because people don't want to hear that you have to be able you have to be able to use regular common language that everybody can understand and they won't be afraid that you're gonna get all crazy on them and you know try and do something churchy on them right so when you calm down get a little bit of wisdom you will see these principles operating operating literally all over the world right you can take advantage of them for your own personal growth and development and enlightenment whatever you want to call it spiritual growth it's the same thing right what i've realized is from studying the different cultures and not just book knowledge but actually traveling around the world worshiping with some of the different people that everybody is really on the path to find y'all the one true source it's just different cultures have different stories they have different teaching aids to try to get you back to source back to y'all even though they call y'all by different names they do recognize i ain't saying all of them some of them do they recognize that there is one creator right and just based on where you at in the world will determine the stories that they used to teach you about him and show you how to get back to him but all these things that you see in the christian church although some of them have been perverted but there is still a little bit of truth there and you won't really be able to see that unless you 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 have a full understanding of what's really happening all over the world and even if you don't y'all so good that even if you don't if you if you learn the principles and you you put them into play he'll begin to open your eyes and show you how it's all over the world like really people are on the path to get back to him some i know some people say what would they say they say it's only hold on i'm i might screw this up like you hear um people say it's is jesus is like the only path to god I, I get I get what they're saying, but the way I understand it today, the way I understand it today, as of what I know and learned up until today, people come. I say I stop. People come from many different areas and backgrounds in life, but they're all on that path to try to find the one source. So it's like the many different nations coming from different backgrounds different understandings trying to find the one single source and the closer we get we literally come together to where we all become on the we all get on the same page so i don't necessarily think that 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 saying that they say it's only uh, yeah I, I think that's wrong not that there's many paths but people come from many different paths to find the one true God. And as they grow and they get closer to him, people, the different, the cultures seem to meet up at a certain point. Like, yo, where you come from? Bro, I was a Christian. You worship Buddha? Yo, you coming to find y'all too? Or they the, the great spirit? Yeah, it led me here. Like at a certain point from wherever y'all has placed you at, right? Wherever he has placed you at in the world, you have to begin to like find your way back to source, find your way back to Yah, find back, find your way back to the creator, the one and only true God. And it's just certain, certain points in life. You can see the different levels people are on and the different paths they are on because the ones who ain't really, ain't really thinking about, it, they just living their life. They kind of like on the outskirts. They are all out here and it, it, it's, it's many of them, right? And then you got the ones that's like, you know what? I'm kind of sick of this scene. Let me, I'm going to get myself together a little bit, right? And the circle, you you come into like this different circle, right? You know, you leave the masses of people that, that's doing as thy wilt, right? And you come in and you find a whole different set of people. And you see everybody looking for something. You know, they look like they're looking for something. And he's like, wait a minute, hold on. We got to go in a little bit more. And you learn a little bit more. You become a little more solid. You start searching. You you really begin to take your studies a little more seriously. And Jai, he's the great orchestrator trying to bring you all back in from the different areas, right? And the closer you get, the more serious you begin to take your, your existence and why you were created and why you're here. It brings you closer. And it brings you closer to different people who are coming from different backgrounds all over the world who have found themselves in this place yo hmm where you what yeah yeah i came out of the whole jesus scene where you come from buddha 
Allah, Krishna. Who? What? We? Are, how do we all end up here? Okay, so hold on. What's what's going on here? Okay, we all coming from different backgrounds. How did you get here? And they begin to tell their story on their search for Yah or their search for God or the search for the ultimate source. At some point, the serious, the more serious you get, you begin to find yourself in a company of people coming from different backgrounds that's truly looking for the one and only God, the one, the voice that they've been hearing. And although... uh whatever language they hear they hear y'all speak to them in their language i speak i hear y'all speak to me in my language but he's brought us all here to this place now when we get here to this place the illusion of separation has to be dealt with right oh now this is something we have to deal with together and we kind of looking back like yo they really believe there is a separation out here there is no separate because once they start taking things seriously they're going to find themselves right here where we're all at coming from different backgrounds looking that same voice is leading us to this place and we just go in together different backgrounds we all colors and flavors on the search the path of that one true god right we coming from many different directions many backgrounds many religious beliefs right and you who is bringing us narrowing us down Getting us down from the many paths to that one path. And we all find ourselves here. Given our experience on how we got here. This is the source. Yo, I was doing this. She was doing that. Oh, we call that this. But you was doing the same thing. I was, oh, yeah, we meditate like this. Oh, we do it like this. Yeah, they kind of frown on us. They tell us you do it like this. But we were all doing the same thing to reach him. And that's when you begin to realize, oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> Something's going on, right? who has his hands in this beautiful mix of our lives that's happening in different cultures different races and well, we didn't deal with the race thing yet yo that's another conversation for another day right just like y'all has planted variety he has planted variety in all aspects right why everybody try to say everybody comes out of one that don't make good common sense. It sound good. It sound good. But how does that change the cranial structure of the races? But we're all the human race and we're compatible, right? We can even we can learn about ourselves by looking at the animal kingdom, about compatibility and knowing that we are, no matter what flavor and race we are, we are still the same species and we're compatible. Because our compatibility allows us to reproduce with the different colors and flavors within a human race. It's nothing more, it's not anything different from a family of strawberries where you can dif get the different colors of strawberries, but it's all strawberries. Or the different carrots, like gardeners can understand that. You can have more than just orange carrots. You can have red carrots. You can have purple carrots. All these different colors, but they're all carrots. And you can splice them and reproduce them with their own kind. And they will give you a blend of beautiful colors, right? And you can do that with grapes. But it's all the same species, just like humans. We're the same species, but you can splice us with one another and get beautiful combinations of us. But now look at the animals. You can't make a, a giraffe with an elephant. They're incompatible. They're different species. Even though, uh, even with the, I think it's what the, the horse and the, the horse and a donkey. Now you can make them. They're kind of close, but it's going to give you an offspring that's sterile because they, you really shouldn't be mating them. And you get a mule, right? And I think that's, I, f I forget which one. If you make a male horse with a female donkey. You get a mule. Well, I could have that backwards. And then when you make a male donkey with a female horse, it's another name. I don't know. I got to get it. Hold on. Let me say donkey, horse, and mule. Hold on. That's how I began to understand really about the human race. I was like, oh my gosh, this will cut out a whole bunch of crap in the world if people really understood this. Because, y'all, race really wasn't a problem amongst the human species because the human species is one species right in the midst of the entire world of different species like we really you who has put us in the midst of a school where we can learn if we would just pay attention right 
Because race was never an issue until they tried to divide us and brought in religion. So when religion came in, thus the whole race issue was created, right? He's put us in the midst of a huge garden called Earth. And it's literally our school teacher. If we will open our eyes and look and see, right? We can learn about compatibility between races and flavors and things just by watching nature and watch nature operate right if you don't screw with it we can learn a whole lot and y'all gives great wisdom even tell you in uh proverbs y'all gives great wisdom to the farmer right if you can understand about nature a whole lot of these religious false beliefs and craziness would be worked out just by observing the habitat and the place he's placed us all in right i'm telling y'all that's it for the day i love y'all it is Tuesday, December the 21st, 2021, day 333 of year three of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets, number <laughs> three this. year consecutive day oh, count, day one. Uh, well, I'm going to send you out with it. And you can be loud with it in there. You can pause it while we do the blessing. And of the three year consecutive day count, day 1001. No. Pause it. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out to the baby in here. Care look. Huh. Let's go ahead and do this. Just showing your lips. Go ahead. Always make sure that's in order. Mm hmm You don't want to have crusty lips. Mommy. Yes, Tootie. Where's Daddy go? And they left to go to the job site, booty. All right, y'all. So with that being said, let's go ahead and do the blessing. Why the car stay? Yeah, she's here. Shutting it down, Marie. Mommy. Yes, boo. Why okay. the car stay here? Because he took the the um he took the rental. Our our car stay here. Mm-hmm. Our car stay here. here. Alright. The blessing y'all. Your car. No, he didn't take mine. Alright, y'all. Or that or that. Yeah, or that one, or that one. Yep. Okay. The blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah will kneel before us, presenting gifts, and will guard us with a hedge protection. Yahuwah will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards us, and he will provide us with love, sustenance, and friendship. And Yahuwah will lift up his wholeness of being and look upon us. And he will set in place all we need to be whole and complete. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. All right, y'all. I love y'all. I see y'all back here tomorrow morning. Bright and early.